So you're Anna Wyants, a stunning, beautiful 28-year-old female painter, and you're dating this 78-year-old man. At first glance, you're probably thinking that, oh, he's just her sugar daddy, she's probably just trying to gold dig him, or oh, maybe she has daddy issues. And you would be somewhat correct, but it goes much deeper than that. See, you as Anna and Wyatt are very smart, and this old dude that you picked up is no regular old dude. No, this old dude is Larry Gagosian. And Larry Gagosian is one of the most powerful men in all of the fine art world. He owns Gagosian Galleries, with 19 different galleries around the world that sells around a billion dollars worth of art every year, making him the richest art dealer in history with a reported net worth of around $600 million. So Larry Gagosian doesn't just control the art market, he practically is the art market. But by all accounts, it's, it's, a, it's a healthy market. Which means if you're a starving artist with a lot of potential, you've got your own unique style, but you just can't seem to get the rest of the art world to see your genius, and you also happen to be a female and beautiful, then Larry Gagosian is the guy you gotta get in bed with. And that's exactly what you as Anna Wyant did. You bang the old dude you want his heart, and boom! Your paintings that used to go for $400 each are now being sold for $1.6 million a 4,000 times increase. And this is not a knock on Anna, by the way. Most of us would probably do the same thing if we were in her shoes. But how? How can one man take a nobody artist and blast her into stardom so quickly? Well, because the art world is dominated by just a few rich people. And at the top of them all is Larry Gagosian. And Anna Wyatt knows just how to court him. Stay dangerous, subscribe for more. And this is how the fine art market really works. Men like Larry have controlled the art world for generations because they've been the only ones that have enough money to actually buy famous arts. And they're also the only ones with the knowledge and connections to know which art to buy. But for the first time ever, things are changing. And now finally, anyone can have access to the art market thanks to Masterworks. Over 800,000 people have joined the Masterworks platform, which grants them access to investment offerings from legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy. Take the new Basquiat offering on Masterworks for example. Public auction info shows that works similar to this new Basquiat offering appreciated in value by over 22% annually from 2006 to 2022. So it's easy to see why the offerings on Masterworks have sold out within minutes. But if you click the link below, you still have the chance to skip the waitlist and start your collection today. Click the link below to skip the waitlist now. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Despite your raw talent, you as Anna Wyatt weren't raised to be a famous artist. Born in Calgary, Canada to a lawyer and a court judge, you were never exposed to art or art history when you were a kid. And the only paintings you ever came across were the ones your grandpa bought from a flea market. And you never really picked up a paintbrush in your youth at all. Nobody would have guessed that when you grew up, your paintings would be worth millions of dollars. It wasn't until college at the Rhode Island School of Design that you really tried your hand at art. You began painting as a way to digest, as a way to understand your childhood and teenage years, like a form of therapy. But almost immediately, it was clear that you had much more than just a gift for painting. You were a straight-up prodigy. By the end of your first semester, all your focus turned to painting. You submitted your work to an art competition put on by the National Gallery of Canada and immediately placed in the top three. By 2017, you graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts before going all the way to China to attend a prestigious art school to hone in your skills. With a rock-solid art education behind you, you moved to New York City, ready to get your painting career off the ground. You spent your days working as a studio assistant for a prominent painter named Cynthia Talmadge. And all your nights were dedicated to painting in your Upper West Side apartments. Cynthia was so impressed by your work that one day, she decided to give you a shout out on Instagram. And that single post took you from being practically unknown to having actual fans and getting a lot of attention. You were taking the first steps towards becoming a successful painter, but you still had a long way to go. By 2019, you were lucky enough to have your first New York Gallery solo exhibition. And what's even crazier is that every single piece sold. The highest earning painting brought in $12,000, but even the cheapest one sold for two grand. This was very impressive for a new artist, as most artists barely make a dime. Less than a year later, you got a feature in New American Painters, and not long after that, you received your golden ticket, representation. You signed with a gallery called Blum & Poe in Los Angeles, and just like that, the value of your painting shot up. Now they're being sold at $50,000 each. That's a little less than the average yearly salary in America for just one painting. You were officially in the big leagues. Only a small percentage of artists make it to this point, and yet for you, it was just the beginning. Shortly after partnering with Blum & Poe Galleries, things started to go sour. 
A rumor was going around that your art dealer Tim Blum was going behind your back. He was supposed to be the guy to make sure your paintings were sold for as much money as possible, but instead he was allowing gallery employees to buy your pieces in advance. They kept drawer work for themselves and told collectors that all your pieces had already been sold out. So who knows how much money they had cost you. You couldn't trust him anymore and you needed a way out. And that's when you cross paths with the legendary Larry Gagosian. Larry spotted your work after your very first solo exhibition and was taken aback with your style. He immediately bought your piece head and hung it in his home. But it wasn't until 2021, after your falling out with Blum and Poe, that you came across Larry again at one of your shows. You were this beautiful, talented young artist, and he was one of your biggest admirers. It sounded like something out of a 90s rom-com. And just like that, you and Larry started dating. Soon he was taking you on luxury vacations to Saint-Tropez and Paris, and he immediately started working his magic to up your value in the art world. In the blink of an eye, you dropped Blum as your art dealer and signed with Gagosian Galleries. And your art career started soaring faster than you could have ever imagined. All of a sudden, your paintings were worth millions. Everyone wanted to work with you. News outlets were plastered with your pictures, calling you the Millennial Botticelli. Your piece Summertime I sold for $12,000 just two years ago was now being resold at $1.5 million. That's right, the exact same painting sold for 125 times more. Larry helped you blow up to millionaire status and made you a household name in the art world in less than a year. He gave you what millions of other artists could only dream of. But how? How did Larry Gagosian do it? What was his secret? Just like you, Larry Gagosian wasn't born into money or the world of luxury arts. In fact, he insists that it was a complete fluke that he got into the art business at all. Larry was the only son of an Armenian family in Los Angeles. His mom was an actor and singer, while his dad was an accountant. He had a happy upper middle class life, and after earning his bachelor's degree in literature, not arts, he started working random little jobs to pay the bills. He worked at a talent agency before he was fired, then he took a job parking cars as a valet. Larry had no idea what to do with his life, until one day he saw a guy in the street selling posters, and the guy was making a decent amount of money from it. And it sparked an idea for Larry, an idea that would go on to make him a multi-millionaire. He thought, why can't I do that too? So he did. Almost immediately, he realized he had a knack for selling posters. They were going so fast that he couldn't keep them in stock. So he started framing them and charging upwards of $100 a piece. Now he was really making money. Larry made so much money off of posters that he quickly earned enough to buy a whole frame shop of his own. And it wasn't long before he opened another storefront selling art prints. These pieces were way fancier than the posters he was peddling before, and it slowly transitioned him from being a street vendor into an art dealer. But Larry knew the only way to make a splash in the art industry was to go through the artists themselves. So he took it upon himself to cold call a photographer named Ralph Gibson, whose work he had seen in an art magazine, offering him the chance to do a show at a spot in LA. And the guy actually said yes. This one phone call will forever change Larry's life. All of a sudden, he was becoming friends with important people in the art world. He was buying artwork and putting on shows for all sorts of artists on the rise. Soon, Larry had become so successful in the art world that he outgrew LA and moved to New York where he started buying more and more expensive paintings. Larry might not have been an art guy at first, but he was now. And combine that with being an insanely talented salesman and business person, and it propelled Larry to become the richest art dealer the world has ever seen. It put him in a position where Larry can take a nobody artist and display their art next to other million dollar pieces in his galleries. He can connect them with all the right magazines. He can get their art into auctions. Larry can even bid on their art to drive up the price. And that's probably exactly what he did with his lover, Anna. But it might not be all sunshines and rainbows for Anna moving forward. You see, artificially popping up a new artist like Anna Wyatt can sometimes lead to a quick burnout. As one art critic put it, the art world loves to devour its young. And from now on, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Anna to keep popping out million dollar art pieces. If Larry Gagosian backs you, you have to live up to his expectations, which can be a lot. Right now, Anna Wyatt is living every artist's dream, but all her success could disappear just as quickly. After all, if one man has the power to give you all the money and fame, he also has the power to take it all away. That is just the nature of the business. Success is often fleeting. A lot of people will shame Anna for playing dirty like this, but the world is a dirty place, and most of her haters would do the exact same thing in her position. 